If you're ever driving west from Edmonton on Highway 16, chances are that you've seen a big mound of earth with what looks like a chairlift on top. This can be found just a couple minutes west of the cities of Spruce Grove and Stony Plain. Most people will continue driving on without a second thought. However, for those curious, this is all that remains of Lake Eden Ski Resort, once a bustling ski enterprise that taught many generations of Albertans to ski. This video will take you through the entire history of Lake Eden its development, and unfortunate fall. So, without further ado, let's jump into this video. Eden Lake started as a fur farm owned by a couple who raised minks. The entire property was 170 acres of land around a lake. The fur farm was named Lake Eden Fur Farm, which is also how the lake got its name. In the mid-1950s, it was purchased by Ray and Annie Quinlan, who developed a small summer resort featuring around eight cabins on the shoreline of the lake. In 1966, this all changed when two brothers bought the resort and dramatically transformed it. These brothers were Willie and Erwin Zeiter, who had developed one of Alberta's biggest construction companies. Born in the south of Ukraine, the two brothers and their mother immigrated to Canada in 1949. Willie and Erwin Zeiter developed Terrace Corporation and constructed Alberta's first seven-story apartment building, which is still standing today. The Zeiter's company continued to grow as they constructed many iconic buildings around Edmonton, such as the U of A Students' Union Building and the EPSB headquarters. However, the Zeiters had a dream of developing their own four-season resort. Thus, in 1966, they purchased the 170-acre Lake Eden property from Ray and Annie Quinlan and set about developing. In the first few years, the brothers added additional cabins and drew up plans for a 30-room hotel. However, the Zeiter brothers had their sights on continued development. It had always been a part of the master plan to develop skiing at Lake Eden. Unfortunately, the 87-foot high hill was too small. So, to compensate, the brothers moved more than 1 million cubic feet of earth to bring the hill up to around 203 feet. To eliminate soil erosion issues, as well as to provide a nicer skiing experience, over 12,000 trees were planted to landscape the 35 ski acres. A 1972 Doppelmayr double chairlift, two Doppelmayr T-bars, and four rope tours were subsequently installed. Additionally, a massive ski chalet was constructed, which became the hub of the resort both in summer and winter. In 1972, the ski resort officially opened with the Lieutenant Governor and the Minister of Culture and Recreation riding up the first chair. The chairlift cost the resort around $120,000, however it was a big success. Lake Eden's first year of operations drew 66,000 skiers to the mountain. The mountain was 100% covered by snow guns, which the Zeiters kept modernizing year after year during the initial years. The brothers additionally kept expanding the day lodge, adding a rental shop and additional restaurants. They had grand plans for the ski resort and wanted to build another man-made hill on the other side of the lake with another chairlift. Additionally, plans for the 30-room hotel were being finalized. However, all these developments never got off to the ground as the Zeiter brothers ran into some financial problems. However, the resort continued operation through the next decade, though it suffered from mismanagement and deferred maintenance. Unfortunately, its local reputation horribly deteriorated to the point where local skiers were calling it the rectum of the Alberta ski industry. However, the Zeiter brothers were forced to sell the resort in the late 80s after their construction empire collapsed financially. A local investor purchased the resort and continued to develop master plans, including an 18-hole golf course on the other side of the lake. He had plans to modernize the skiing and lodge. Unfortunately, this investor didn't have the capital to do so. So, he sold it to a group of Taiwanese investors who pledged to spend over $12 million to upgrade the existing facilities, as well as to develop the golf course and a 100-room hotel. The investor also changed the name to Lake Eden Golf and Country Club, Additionally, the developers also permanently closed the existing campgrounds along the lake, earning the ire of many local residents. Just two ski seasons later, Eden Lake experienced one of its worst winters ever. 
This prompted the investors to pull the plug on skiing operations, announcing that it would not open for the 1992-93 to ski season. They still planned the golf course and hotel, but put skiing operations on an indefinite hold. Just three years later, the summer resort closed after an unfortunate drowning incident. The closure cost the community around 50 jobs and left a void in the local skiing community, which was already feeling the impact of Swiss Valley closing. The resort continued to deteriorate for years after closing. Each year, the ski lodge became in worse and worse shape until 2012 when a fire ravaged the building. I'm unclear if it was a controlled burn or arson. However, virtually everything else in the ski hill is still on the mountain, though it's showing its age extremely. There have been development proposals for the former ski hill, however, nothing has ever happened. At this point, it's extremely unlikely that skiing operations will ever return to Eden Lake. Lake Eden did not have a very large skiing operation. It only had a 50 meter vertical drop off the double chair, with the chairlift being around 280 meters long. So, let's break down the trails. Starting near the former base lodge site, we see the twin rope toes. These lifts travel through a group of trees, offering the beginner skier two wooded trails, one leading right to the base lodge. These rope toes have an elevation gain of around 25 meters and are only 190 meters long. This is the perfect learning area for beginner skiers. Moving west, we see the tandem Doppelmayr T-bar lift setup. These lifts travel to almost the same place as the double, though serve as some beginner to intermediate terrain as a good stepping stone for the beginner skier. There was a green trail at the top of the T-bars that led back down to the rope toes. There was also a blue run that led the skier back down to the bottom of the T-bar. Finally, if the skier went right after unloading, there was a little steep gully accessible off the T-bars that was most likely black diamond. This gully led to the bottom of the chairlift or T-bar area. Finally, the chairlift serviced the biggest vertical drop of Lake Eden and offered intermediate to advanced ski runs. The westernmost run of the ski resort follows the perimeter of the property, then snakes back down to the T-bars. There's a short, steep pitch under the chair that follows the gully. Additionally, near the bottom of the chair, it looks like the ski hill had a super pipe set up. Please note that there is no official trail map of the runs at Lake Eden, so this is my best guess following Google Earth satellite imagery. While it was not the biggest, Lake Eden played an important role in the Edmonton ski community, teaching generations of Albertans to ski. Unfortunately, it suffered from mismanagement and deferred maintenance, which eventually spelled the end for the resort. Perhaps if events unfolded differently, Lake Eden would still be around servicing the Edmonton area. However, it is currently frozen in time, as a memento to a bygone era of skiing. An era which we all remember and long for, but cannot recreate. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And until next time, this is Skier72.